I think this reed is just perfect for this time of year because the frost is just starting to hit the ground and winter is right around the corner and it just, yes. Hi guys, it's April and I'm gonna do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I'm gonna have the non-spoilery section up front followed by the spoiled filled dump afterwards in case you don't wanna spoil yourself. But otherwise, feel free to stick around for the whole video because I would love that. So, White Stag. White Stag by Kara Barbary. This is the story of Yannicka who goes by Janiki. In her family, she is the youngest daughter who is fulfilling the role of a male heir. She has trained with her father under all of the male arts, but one day when she's 17 years old, her village is burned down and she is the only survivor. She is taken captive by a goblin named Lydian, but we start out the story when she is a thrall for a goblin named Soren. It is a hundred years since the death of her village, and she has now spent the last hundred years learning to survive. Now, goblins in this instant are more like fae. They are very beautiful, they are more human-like, but they have this primal nature to them in which they can revert to very fierce prey-like creatures. I will throw out trigger warnings for rape and torture. It has a lot to do with what she's dealing with as she's living in this goblin society. Now in the goblin society, there is an elk king who is backed by the white stag, but every once in a while, the white stag will leave that elk king, that elk king will die, and it's up to the next elk king to hunt down and kill this white stag, and so begin the cycle anew. This is what happens at the very beginning, and this whole book follows Janika as she travels with Soren, hunting down the stag, and dealing with her past and coming to terms with herself. I will say I love the lore and setup of this story, Story. There is a depth and a connection with the old folklore that I really enjoyed. The setting, the permafrost, is just perfect for this time of year, for that coming of winter, for that winter time. You can feel that chill as you're reading this story, and the fact that it has such a strong pull into the whole magical system is interesting as well. There were points in this book where I was brought out of it a little bit because a lot of the language, especially from the main character, just felt too modern. She had some sassy moments where she pulled out some very modern language that didn't feel right to me. And there's also a build of a romance in the story as well that I didn't dislike, but the way it, it didn't build quite enough in a linear, believable fashion. It, it bordered that line of almost being instant because there was a lot of things that, that these characters had to get over for it to really feel authentic and this book is not nearly big enough for that to even happen. But I still really enjoyed the story. It left in a place where if you just wanna read this one, it's fine, but there is a book too and the epilogue kind of hints at where it is going with all of that. And so I am very, very interested in seeing where that goes because this does have a lot of those labyrinth, fae, old world folklore feel to it that I just really like. And there's some, some parts that are written that are almost lyrical, which I truly enjoy in these kind of stories. So if any of that sounds even remotely interesting. I say pick up this book. I enjoyed it for what it was and it, I'm definitely glad to have it in my collection. Now this is the point where I'm gonna start going into some spoiled filled thoughts. So if you don't wanna be spoiled because you want to read the book, I would absolutely love that. Leave a comment down below and of course, after you finished it, we will have a conversation. Otherwise, if you feel like spoiling yourself, that's perfectly fine as well. I have to say the buildup of Yannicka 
into becoming the white stag. That part of the story is what I actually enjoyed the most. Seeing flashbacks of where she came from and then slowly her piecing together and coming to accept the change in her nature and then having that moment with the white stag and realizing how how one part of your life closes but that doesn't end your future it just becomes something different there are moments in this there I can see little glimpses can look little tiny glimpses that this author could grow into a writing style very similar to Catherine Arden and it might be a little bit because of the topics that they are covering and the parts of the world and lore that they decided to do is is pretty much it matches and it's just there's something there's a little gem inside of Kara and her writing that I think if she continues, she can really grow into something amazing. But that being said, there there were definitely parts in the story where I'm like, okay, I, I get what this is trying to do. I just don't like the fact that it didn't go as far as it could have. Because like I said, the characters felt too modern for the setting of the story. There, there was a, a line where she just turns around to Soren and is like, bite me. And then that that is the moment, that is the biggest moment that threw me off. I'm like, okay, in my brain, especially since we kept on talking about her village, I felt like we were more 16th, 17th, possibly 18th, depending on where we wanted to do it, that that language wouldn't have made sense for when she grew up. And yes, she only spent 17 years and she's now like 117 at this point. Where would she have picked up that language? It doesn't make sense that it would. she would have modernized like that if she had come from 100 years ago. And you could argue the fact that they're constantly stealing humans and bringing them in. But there, there's a moment where we meet a group of humans and they're carrying swords and bows and not guns. So it can't be too modern at this point. And the fact that they, they're bringing humans in, so maybe some of that language is introduced to her. But if you look at how all the other thralls act, we only see small glimpses of them. They, they wouldn't have interacted with her. Her biggest interaction was always with Sauron. You never got the feel that she interacted with anybody else except for maybe the healer and other goblins, which was interesting. And it might have been part of how she was treated because she was so elevated in Sauron's house that she she missed out on keeping some of those human connections. But from the very beginning, she never really had that because Lydian tortured her endlessly. So she had no other human interactions there. And then when she entered Soren's house, because of Soren's past with her that she didn't even know about, he treated her like an elevated pet. And the fact that that was supposedly supposed to mask his feelings for her in some way. There are points in that that just felt a little icky to me, but at the same time, I I love, I love labyrinth fan fiction <laughs> where you have Jareth and Sarah. And so I, part of me was just getting the nostalgia for that relationship in this relationship. So might've been why I enjoyed this story more than a, a, a lot of other people <laughs> may have. But yeah, I just, I enjoyed it. It was just the perfect time to read this book and I am interested in seeing where this next book goes. I am wondering, cause see what usually happens in these kind of stories is you build up this relationship and the relationship happens and then the main character has to separate from this relationship because we have to build that anxiety about said relationship. So I have a feeling we're gonna see less of Soren in this next book, but that's just my guess. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts down below. And of course, if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.